Which game do we need to talk about today? How about the one that looks boring, but is actually quite fun? It's Fresco! Yes, we're going to be playing Fresco! But don't make the same mistake I did. Don't look at this game and think it's boring and keep on walking. Play the game. The game is fantastic. I saw this when it first came out, and I walked right by it because I said, this game looks boring and I'm not going to enjoy it. But one of my friends got me to play this game, and I'm so glad I did, because this is now one of my favorite Euro games. I really, really enjoy it. Let me show you why. Fresco is one of my absolute favorite Euro games. Like any typical Euro, it comes with meeples and cubes. Lots of cubes. Look at all this stuff! The game is for two to four players, and depending on that, it dictates which side of the board you will use. I'm going to be showing you a three-player game. We are supposed to be restoring this cathedral. I don't know why, it looks pretty good to me though. Well, nevertheless, we need to put out some of these tiles that indicate what we can paint. Then this guy goes here. Oh, this is the bishop. He's here to watch us work. You put the money, which is called dollars, here. And then you put the cubes here. Look at all these cubes. There are so many cubes. So many cubes. Well, there's not too many, I suppose. I've seen games with far more cubes. Oh, and we're not gonna be playing with the brown or the pink cubes, so let me go and get rid of those. We will be playing the basic game. We each need to take 12 thalers and one of each of the basic colored paints. Now we need to put some paint out at the stalls and decide the turn order. You will notice that they have four options of what time you wish to wake up at. 5, 6, 7, or 8 a.m. with 5 a.m. being the first. Makes sense since you wake up before the crack of dawn and you have first dibs on paint and such. However, waking up that early puts your workers in a foul mood, and you will have to pay the higher price at the paint at the stalls, that being four thalers per tile. So why not just sleep in then? Well, if you sleep in, you get whatever is left for paint at the stalls, and you do everything last, so you need to determine when it's best to wake up early or sleep in late. If you wake up early too often, you could lose a worker for that round, be careful. But on the flip side of that, you could actually get an extra guy, as indicated by this wooden meeple, if your mood is high enough. After determining turn order, you need to put your guys on this board to indicate which actions you wish to take this round. Every guy here allows you to buy one paint tile from the stalls. Every guy here allows you one painting action within the cathedral. This one simply gives you three thalers. This one allows you to mix paint. And the final one improves your mood by two. Everyone has to resolve all of their actions in turn order before moving on to the next action. Well, enough of all that. Let's start this game. Well, here's how I set my guys up, and I get to go first this round. So I will start with my two buy actions, and I want these two paints. Green and orange are always good paint tiles. They will likely be taken each round. It essentially saves you a mixing action to acquire them. Also, when I finish my buy actions, the shop closes down and the remainder of the paint is discarded. However, I may only buy from one stall. Since I chose this stall, I therefore could not buy this orange paint from over here. Once all players have finished their buy actions, we move on to the painting actions. Most of the time you will be painting the cathedral, I mean that's what we're here for anyway. But you may also restore the altar by discarding one of each of the primary colors. You get two points. If you replace a secondary color, you get one additional point for each one. Or you can get six if you use all three secondary colors. Most of the time you will only do this action if you have nothing else to paint. 
For example, if someone has taken your tile that you were intending to paint, otherwise you choose which tile you want to paint. Discard the corresponding paint and take the tile. Going back to the bishop again, if he is next to the tile you paint, you get two additional points. If he's directly on the tile you are painting, you score three additional points. So before you actually decide to paint, you may spend one thaler to move the bishop to any of the eight spaces directly around him, but only once per paint action. So I want this tile up here. I pay one thaler and I move the bishop. And I discard the paint and collect my tile. Finally, the bishop moves to the empty space where my tile previously was, regardless of where he actually was. I scored 7 points from this tile, not bad. You will also notice that this tile has a thaler on the back. For the remainder of the game, I will collect one thaler for every paint tile that I have, so it's an easy way to collect money. As for collecting money, the next action is collecting three thalers. Well, we are painting a portrait, but it could be a helpful way to get more money for the next round. Then we move on to mixing paint. Every guy here allows you two mixing actions. Pretty simple. They even include a color reference card in case you need to know what makes what. Finally, we resolve the theater action. That is, every guy here allows your mood to move up by two. That is about the gist of a typical game round. You collect any thalers from your paint tiles, refill the market stalls, and determine player order. Whoever has the least amount of victory points will choose first as to what time they wish to wake up for the next round. The game continues in this manner until there are six or fewer painting tiles left in the cathedral. Then, you have one final round. You flip your player board over and you will use this side during the final round. You will notice that you have a second painting action after the mixing paint action. After the final round, whoever has the most victory points is the winner. Well everybody, that was Fresco. So you may have noticed I have some of the expansion modules in this box. Well, most copies of Fresco now come with three of the expansion modules. But you can even get the big box that has all of it in there if you want to. Usually the base game's good for most players. But nevertheless, play the game. Don't, don't look at this and think it's a boring game. Play the game. Play the game. Play the game. Well, nevertheless, it's a good game. There's another game that's very similar to this by the same designers, but we're gonna save that for another day. Until now, go play the game. I'm out of here. Thank you for watching Chris's Game Room.